um, box all the way from Canada this time um, and a, a, a long travel box um, there must have been something funny with um, Canada's post uh, before Christmas because this box sat for a very long time inside the um, Canadian Postal Service before it started moving um, which then made it run into Christmas and I will say the box has been sitting here for a week I just haven't had a chance to do the unboxing and then move on to recording the gameplays these are homebrew games which I haven't had for a little while for the ColecoVision uh, there are five of them in here work our way through they're very well wrapped as is usual so these are Team Pixel Boy titles um, now the first one we unfortunately aren't going to be able to do a gameplay of because they've had a production issue with it is a pity because it's one of my um, favourite games for the MSX I mean I can play the MSX version of course but it's um, Nightmare screenshots on the back. I'm not percent sure those screenshots are doing it justice either. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, how it plays compared to the um, uh, MSX version. It obviously requires the Super Game module which pretty much makes uh, a Coleco a simple MSX by adding taking the RAM up to 32k and adding the um, MSX's base sound chip this ROM apparently it may play uh, but then it locks up fairly quickly so we might be able to plug it in and you know pop it up and see some title music and things like that I suppose we might as well open up the box and see what the um, cartridge is like so there we go they do an excellent as Team Pixel Boy always does an excellent job with the cartridges and labels That's normal one and you get a full colour printed manual as well So that's the first one. So it basically, um, you know, quite a while ago, notified that, that there is an issue with that one. So he's going to send out um, a replacement cartridge with uh, my next lot of titles, which uh, aren't ready to ship yet. And then there'll be the obviously usual delay. So it'll be quite a few months before I get to play that one properly. Right, the next title is a um, right this is a conversion across from the SG1000 and it's called Boxel it's a puzzle game which will be quite interesting so this art on the front is the art from the original SG1000 game And this time we went for a, a, an Activision style cartridge mold. Repeat the artwork there. And, ooh, some overlays fell out. So here we go. We've got a uh, manual, and as a surprise, I didn't realize that it has an overlay. You don't get overlays very often. I suppose it, is, it probably is quite a complicated game to play, puzzle wise. I'm not 100% sure I have this for the SG-1000 yet. I don't. The name Boxel doesn't gel, but the picture most certainly does. Maybe I've looked at it on um, some online auctions at various stages. Okay, I'll try not to spend too much time putting these back in the box. But once again, all very good, high quality. Now next. Now this is another MSX conversion, and this really is a um, bit of a hidden gem on the MSX. It came out, it was published by Casio. I do need to be careful when they put their sticky. Okay, um, it was published by Casio um, for the MSX, and um, I've got a loose card of it. And it's actually a really cool game. It's it's Zelda-like, you could say, except you work your way purely um, up and down a tower, fighting your way through monsters and things. So there's no map or anything like that. But you do 
but it has a similar play mechanic as far as fighting your way through. So this one they've called, I mean, the subtitle was The Stone of Wisdom. Um, and it's a port from the MSX. So it requires a super game module. There's the cartridge, just a normal one. And the manual. So pretty much to port a game like this um, with the super game module, you just have to go through and change some port numbers. Um, and um, you know, ensure the game doesn't use more than 32k RAM when not many cartridge games would actually require more than 32k RAM. Um, and you're pretty much done. So uh, these conversions don't take very long and that's allowing people to have access to games they wouldn't otherwise have found out because it's not easy to get a copy of those titles on MSX. Okay, we've got another one here. Um, and it's quite a good, uh, so this requires a super game module as well. Um, not 100% sure whether this was on the SG-1000 or not, or whether this is an MSX one. I don't, I, I don't actually know, I don't have, it's a bro, uh, Broder Band game, so it's Spelunker. I definitely don't have this one for the SG-1000 or the MSX, so I can't tell you what the source of this one was, but MSX port, so it's come from the MSX, so there we go. So a title I need to find on the MSX, it looks like quite an interesting little game. We've, um, you've got lifts and finding things, looks a little bit like the Goonies as well. Um, probably the, out of the, this lot, probably the one I'm looking forward to playing the most, because I haven't got it on any other system. It's a good cartridge. And here's the manual. So it does an excellent job with these boxes and manuals and it just gives you um, good game experience. And you can still order probably pretty much all of these titles from Team Pixel Boy. So if you're interested in any of these and you have a Coleco, or even if you're thinking about getting a Coleco in the future and these games would interest you, go check out his website and and maybe get some for yourself. Now the next one is actually a title I technically already have, but they have produced a special variant of it. So, um, it's a hacked version of, uh, and it comes in a weird case, I didn't know about the weird case, but anyway, we'll find a spot for it on the shelf somewhere. <laughs> um, and it's a hacked version of Frontline that uses the uh, standard Coleco controller, um, which makes the game easier to play without having to put in a special controller. Now it's in this weird plastic case. So you have a basically the front thing is the manual. It also comes with an overlay, which is cool. It's really cool getting overlays with these games now. And we have one of the mini stubby cartridges. So that's the cartridge mould I actually have for producing. Um, I always make a couple of physical prototypes of my games. And it's just got a little spacer thing there, which is probably way heavier than it needed to be, but anyway. Um, interesting packaging. Alright, but we'll be able to give that a go. So we can, I said we should be able to fire up all of those games, um, but obviously Nightmare is going to lock up on us at some stage more than likely. So, um, and I'm actually looking forward to playing some Coleco games. So let's go and do that now. Right, so first cab off the range is Frontline and Standard Controller version. Uh, we'll go for skill level 1. I'm not very good at this game. So it's a vertical scrolling commando type game. Right, so that chucks it on. Right, and what this does is you use the number pad, the two top numbers, to rotate the fire. Still 
does make it easy. Is that I'm not particularly good at the other versions, I never have been. bad once your brain gets used to what you've got to do. Tank. And we're fighting tanks. It becomes a completely different game. Actually, I'm getting further than I normally do. I normally die a lot sooner than this. See that I'm just in a playing mood today. Oh, that was close. being clumsy. So now we're back to our walking self. Alright, since I've got a phone call, I'll leave it at that. We'll move on to the next game. Alright, so here we go with Nightmare, which I would expect would be pretty similar to the... Um, to the MSX game. I've got a normal and an easy. <laughs> now this is one of my favourite games for the MSX. Now obviously we're using um, a super game module so it basically has an extra 32k RAM and um, the MSX sound chip. So I would expect it wouldn't be very different from original at all. Um, as, I said, as I mentioned earlier in the pickup part, there's um, a bug in the cartridge apparently, so it will lock up at some stage. Fight for the shield. Bonus wiping up formation. This is, you know, one of the first Konami games where I knew that Konami was doing such a good... Oh. Um, let's freeze. 
just doing doing such a good job of the game. The same as you know, like they're using two sprites here to introduce more colours and a pretty good flicker routine to think and not worrying about the fact that you can only call skull. It doesn't make the game any less fun. Just interested to see how far I can get now. Um, do I want to change weapons? I'll show you. Not the best weapon in the world, but not the worst weapon ever. Oops, I didn't see. <gasps> Dear. And sure it's, it's a very unforgiving. It not, I mean, it doesn't knock you completely back, but of course you lose any power up shav. I don't like the around, we'll go back to that. And there are hidden things like. You saw that pop up there. So it gets rid of all of the. Red one gets rid of all of the enemy bullets and freezes everything, so. Shield back. I'm waiting for a lock up. Well, if I manage to make it to the first boss, I won't complain. You can only take so many hits too. Oh, there we go, and let's collect all cool those. Um, we're getting close to the end. It's actually quite amusing how the Nightmare series continued, and the next two games are completely different games. Oh, come from behind me. Now I'm starting to get cramped. Um, well, I'm almost dead anyway, so. Oops. Oh, and he got me. Yeah, it's starting to get hand cramped. Alright, well, it didn't lock up on me, um, but it, apparently it does, so. We'll have to wait and see. I'll have to give it a proper uh, longer play later and read the thing about where it's supposed to lock up. Alright, let's try our next game. Okay, so this is Voxel, um, an SG-1000 port. Uh, doesn't need the Super Game module. Um, and a game I don't have for the SG-1000 yet, I checked. Must be one of the um, card games I don't have. Right, so we have to work out how to get to these things. Is it? Oh no, that's where we have to push them. Oh, they're all stuffed up, I don't know. I was thinking you just had to get to them. So I'm not going to win any pri uh, speed records now, am I? Yep, now I know the game. Nothing wrong with these sort of puzzle games. There we go, so not, not, not going to be the highest score by any extreme. But this is quite well put together game, so nothing wrong with this one at all. Um, and you, you, you know, you've got to think about what you're going to move first and how you're going to get some things where you need to get them. Okay, so that's the thing, how do you move this? Oh, yeah, well, so look, you have to push 
but there you go. Yeah. You have to think about where you're going to be able to get manoeuvrability. to, yeah, I can't push that down now, and I don't think you can, yeah, retry. Yeah, so you need to think it through, so not a very good example there, was it? Um, so I needed to, yeah, this one needs to go here. since it has to go all the way around. I want us to go there, except now I can't get there. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm stupid. One more try. Okay. Let's put that one there. Let's put this one over here for later. Let's move that up here. This one all the way over here, and this one here, and then we'll go get this one. Yay! I can do puzzles. So that's actually an excellent little game. So um, if you like puzzle games like this for your Coleco, um, you don't need an SGM for this one. I'd grab it. All right, let's try the next game. Right, now here we go with Stone of Wisdom. Now I have to thank uh, Luce Mo Luke Morse, sorry, I'm getting a tongue twister there. Luke Morse from quite a few years ago who actually did a gameplay of this on the MSX. Um, and then I sought out and found a copy. Let's the title screen. Um, and um, it's a great game. Um, and you can actually continue with save codes. So you basically, you're going up the tower. So a bit of intro music. So. So, and you do a Zelda-like stab you can do in the direction you're last facing. So every creature you kill uh, gives you experience. And you can also, whoops, that's a bad pet. Some things require more, more things to hit, and you can collect the other things, which power up your various abilities. You can hit the cold boost. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so that, so that gave us um, life, basically. They gave us hit points. It's not too hard to start with. It's one of those games. I'm sure you can hit those. No, it's bad for me. You can hit these though. Now obviously enemies moving a little bit faster now. Tune's a little repetitive, yes, but there we go. They've got our intel up. We need a red one though. Put up our strike bow. So in actual fact its gameplay is quite simple. Um, but it makes it quite a fun game. Like you 
hits because I don't have much power yet. So there's a bit of a flight sprite issue there. That's what happens when you get too many sprites in a row. Um, but this was quite a surprise to find this game. Uh, one that I didn't know about back in the day. Um, on the MSX. And I said it's one of the first Casio titles that I bought. And that made me look at more of the Casio titles. different strengths. I mean the music will probably send you mad after a while. Yeah, so as you can see you gradually make your way out the tower. I can probably play this for quite some time and I do have a few games to get through so we better move on to uh, Spelunker, our last game. Now, I left Spelunka to last because obviously it's an MSX port and it's an MSX game I've never played. Um, don't have a copy either, so I'm looking forward to this one. So I've got to mention obviously the previous one since it was a direct MSX port must have the SGM module. So hopefully more SGM modules will be available to more people soon. That's the hardest thing with um, uh, these wonderful games. Now. I don't know. I don't know how far you can. Obviously, not very far. Can't fall very far. No. We'll work this out. I said I've, I've never played this game at all, so. Makes it hard, doesn't it? Game over already. Well, I think we better have another go. I was right to jump the first time, wasn't I? Can you tell we're playing a game that I've never played before? So, got lots of screens joined together. So, yeah, can go. Um, now, I'll tell you that's not good for me. Oh, I forgot to jump. Ooh, ghost thing. Oh dear. So it's a forced scrolling game. I think that's lives you out again. Ah oh dear, we're gonna have to have an <coughs> oh, me. Yeah. How do I tell when I've never played a game before at all, or even seen it? So I have no idea what some of these things are going to do to help us out. But I'm just assuming that everything's going to hurt me at the moment. Ooh. I pressed the other button then, by the way. Missed the jump, you've got to jump late, obviously. Uh, 
Um, alright, well I'm obviously not very good at this game, so, but you can see it's very interesting and I need to play it some more. Alright, I'm Electric Adventures, thank you all to my subscribers, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.